You know, this is a special afternoon story time. So it's the children's room at the Somerville Library and Somerville Community Access Television who are here to record it. And we're going to be able to show this to people who, oh, yeah. yep, on the internet, maybe on TV, people who can't come to the library today for it, but they'll be able to watch it later, okay? So let's start with, what's it called again? Go away, Anyone? Is he scary? No. <laughs> Go away, big green monster. Funny, funny, funny. I was. Big green monster has two big yellow eyes, a long bluish greenish nose, a big red mouth with sharp white teeth. Two little squiggly ears, scraggly purple hair, and a big, scary green face butt. You don't scare me, so go away, scraggly purple hair. Can you tell that hair to go away? Go, go away! away. Go away, two little squiggly ears. Go away, Go away, long bluish greenish nose. Go away. Long bluish greenish nose. <laughs> Go away, big green face. Go away. Go away, big red mouth. Go away. Go away, sharp white teeth. Away. Is it working? Yeah. Go away, two big yellow eyes. Go away. Two big yellow eyes. Go away, big green monster. Go away, big green monster. And don't come back until we say so. The end. Do you like that one? Yeah. So, thumbs up. So that was story number one. Down. down. Story number one is down. This is story number two. You said it. That's right. And it's about a boy named Jeremy. It's called Jeremy Draws a Monster. This is one of my favorite books. I love it. Wait, you don't like it? <gasps> Should we not read it? Yeah. Jeremy lived on the top floor of a three-story apartment building. He had his very own room. He never left. He never went outside. One day, Jeremy took out his fancy pen and started to draw. He began at the top and continued over to the other side. Jeremy drew a monster. Ah. 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 Ah, said the monster. Draw me a sandwich. I'm hungry. The monster did not say thank you. Draw me a toaster, growled the monster. I like toast. Draw me a record player. It's too quiet around here. Draw me a checkerboard. I want to play checkers. Draw me a comfortable chair. Draw me a television. I want to watch the game. And draw me a hot dog, too. Draw me a telephone. Somebody might call. Draw me a piece of cake. I want dessert. Then the monster said, are you going to sit there all day? Draw me a hat. I'm going out. Jeremy was relieved that the monster was gone. Whew. Later that night, Jeremy heard bang, bang, bang on the door. The monster had returned. Oh, and what did he do? sleeping in it. Oh boy. The next morning Jeremy drew a bus ticket and 
a suitcase. Jeremy led the monster out the door, down the stairs to the street, and on to the next bus out of town. See ya. Bye-bye. Later, Gator. Do you want to play ball, asked the neighbors. Okay, Jeremy said. And they did. And that's the end of story number two. Thumbs up. Thumbs up and you didn't. Thumbs up. Oh, no, you did a thumbs down. How come? You didn't thumbs like up. it? Thumbs, thumbs up. up? Yeah, okay. Um, how are you doing? You ready for story number three? Yeah. Oh, I love this book. Me too. Another favorite of mine. It's the story of the three robbers. Da 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 dum da dum da dum. No, there's not really a lot to like about them, right? <laughs> but yet this book is still so good. Once upon a time, there were three fierce robbers. They went about hidden under large black caps and tall black hats. The first had a blunderbuss, the second had a pepper blower, and the third had a huge red ax. In the dark of night, they walked the roads, searching for victims. What does that mean? They're searching for people to do kind of bad things to. Maybe rob them? They're not very nice people. No, they're mean. They are mean. They terrified everyone. <coughs> Women fainted. Brave men ran. Dogs fled. To stop the carriages, the robbers blew pepper in the horse's eyes. With the axe, they smashed the carriage wheels. And with the blunderbuss, they threatened the passengers and plundered them. That they took the things that the passengers had. Maybe they had trunks that had clothing or money or treasures. The robbers' hideout was a cave high up in the mountains. There they carried their loot. They had trunks and chests full of gold, jewels, money, watches, wedding rings, and precious stones. But one bitter black night, the robbers stopped a carriage that had but one passenger, an orphan named Tiffany. She was on her way to live with a wicked aunt. Tiffany was delighted to meet the robbers. I mean, if you have a choice between a wicked aunt or the um, kidnappers, what are you going to pick? Aunt. The aunt? Okay. <laughs> Since there was no treasure but Tiffany, the thieves bundled her in a warm cape and carried her away. They made up a soft bed for her in a corner of the cave, and there she slept. The next morning, she awoke to find herself surrounded by trunks of glittering riches. What's all this for, she asked. The robbers choked and sputtered. <coughs> they had never thought of spending their wealth. What does wealth mean? All of the things that they took and kept means that it's good for them because now they have a lot of things, like maybe money to buy things. But they the didn't have Maybe they didn't, but where did they? But they took it from other people, right? That was mm. mean. That was not a good thing that to was do. Being like a real robber. Mm -hmm. that and that the was bank. also mean. That robbed yes, the bank. exactly. That it the it was not nice, was it? Mm -hmm. But so far, are they nice to Tiffany? No. Yeah. No. Yes. They set off and gathered up all the lost, unhappy, and abandoned children they could find, and. They bought a beautiful castle where all of them could live. Dressed in red caps and capes, the children moved into their new house. Stories of the castle spread throughout the land. New children came or were brought each day to the doorsteps of the three robbers. The children grew until they were old enough to marry. 
Then they built houses around the castle. A village grew up full of people dressed in red caps and capes. These people built three tall, high roof towers, one for each of the three robbers. And that is the end. Do you like that one? Thumbs up! Thumbs up! So what happened to the robbers at the end? Oh, how come you didn't like it? Yeah, they were bad. Were they bad in the beginning? Yeah. Yeah. And then what? They turned good. They did. Tur you think they turned good? Yeah. I think they wanted to do something good with all their, when they were being so bad. Okay. This is a brand new story, and it's really funny. It's called Extremely Cute Animals Operating Heavy Machinery. Got that? <laughs> And do we remember what book this is? It's story number four. four. Good, you're right. But look at all these guys. Do they look adorable? No. Are those extremely cute animals? Yes, they are. Come on, they're all pink and purple and light blue. Red. Red. One beautiful. Wait, what color is your favorite color? Purple. purple. My favorite color. Gold. Really? Yeah, Interesting. Mine is pink and purple and blue. Pink, purple, and blue. Hey, do any of you like green? Is that your favorite color? Uh, any yeah, green lover? Green. You like, is it your favorite I though? Like red? Red? I like red. Oh, like uh, green? Really? Color. That's great. What? All the other colors? My favorite color is orange. No way. No one ever says orange. That's so great. Purple. How mine about you? Mine is orange, red, and blue. Mine, my favorite color is rainbow. Oh, so you get them all in there. Yeah, that's good. Mine, you know what? It's a good thing we've got a color story coming up. That's awesome. All right, should we get started? Yeah. All right. Okay. One beautiful summer day, Karen. An extremely cute animal was at the playground making a sandcastle. Skylar appeared out of nowhere. Hey, guess what? This is my sandbox and I say no stupid sandcastles. He stomped. He smashed. And he walked off laughing. Karen's extremely cute friends were there for her. We'll make a bigger and better sandcastle. Skylar came back with his buddies, Mike and Trent. Skylar meant business. What did I say, Karen, huh? I said, this is my playground and no stupid sandcastles. He's a meanie boy. The extremely cute animals were undaunted. But the bullies were watching and waiting. They brought snowboards, pogo sticks, and a bad attitude. Oh, goodness. That didn't stop Karen and her friends. The extremely cute animals started building a sandcastle that was bigger and better than before. The bullies sprayed. They spattered. And they soaked the sandcastle down. Break it down with water. Mm -hmm. Being extremely cute doesn't mean you can't get extremely mad. Ugh. Look at Karen. Ooh. My goodness. An hour later, Karen came back with the biggest, baddest, loudest bulldozer she could find. Move your butts. We have a job to do. Joshua flew in the heavy lift helicopter. The playground was hoisted away. Steel beams were delivered, measured, and cut, then lifted way, way up. Look at Karen, hard at work. She's busy. The next day, the extremely cute animals opened the grandest sandcastle plus amusement park anyone had ever seen. There were roller coasters, water slides, and ferris wheels, bumper cars and bumper boats and carousels, a tilt-a-whirl, 
bungee jumping, and a climbing wall. Where's the climbing wall? Hmm. Anyone see it? No, I think it's behind the tree. You think so? Yeah. Maybe it's like behind the trees or maybe behind the castle. I don't know. But best of all, there were no bullies allowed. Clank. Clank. How do you think the bullies are feeling? Sad. Until Karen opened the gate just a crack and said, would you like to come in too? Skylar, Mike, and Trent were nervous. They knew the extremely cute animals were extremely angry with them. But it turned out that they were also extremely good at including everyone. From that day on, everyone had an extremely great time riding and racing and even stomping and smashing. And that's the end. Did you like it? That one's brand new. What'd you think? Yeah. Thumbs up. Thumbs down, thumbs up, thumbs in the middle. All right, good. So far, so good. Oh, oh, thank you. Okay, so we read how many so far? Four? We did five already? One, two, three, four. What? One, two, three. That's story number four. We're going on to story. How are we doing for time? Anyone got a watch? You feel like? All right. Let's see. All right, let's do The Caterpillar and the Polywog. I love this book. I haven't read it for a while. You're getting, oh, buddy, relax. Just rest, OK? Um, OK, Caterpillars and Polywogs. You might know something about them before we get started. Yeah. For example, do you know? The tap won't turn into frogs because the tap won't turn into butterflies. Okay, you know who doesn't know that? These two, they don't know. Because they don't have. The so don't tell them yet. This is their story. Ow! Caterpillars aren't like other folks. As ducks and hippopotamuses, and you and I get older, we get bigger, especially hippopotamuses, but not caterpillars. They turn into butterflies. I know that. Turning into something else like that is not a thing just anybody can do. Hey. Down by the pond, there lived a caterpillar who was very proud of being different. She bragged about it to her friends. When I grow up, I'm going to turn into something else, she said to the snail. That's nice, said the snail, who really didn't care one way or the other. When I grow up, I'm going to turn into something else, she told the turtle. Psh, I don't blame you, said the turtle, who didn't much like wiggly things. When I grow up, I'm going to turn into something else, she told the pollywog. What fun, said the pollywog. What are you going to turn into? But the caterpillar hurried on her way, looking for someone else to tell her secret to. I wish I could turn into something else when I grow up, said the pollywog. You will, said the fish. All pollywogs do. <gasps> well, what am I going to turn into, the pollywog asked. But the fish saw a tasty bug and dashed after it. Yes. When I grow up, said the caterpillar, who had circled around the pond and was going around for the second time. Bye. When I grow up, she told the pollywog again, I'm going to turn into something else. So, so am I, said the pollywog. You? The caterpillar was so surprised she almost fell into the pond. The fish said so, the pollywog told her. Fish know things. They go to school. <clears throat> the caterpillar was upset. I thought only caterpillars could do it, she said rather sadly. What are we going to turn into, the pollywog asked. Well, I'm going to turn into a butterfly, said the caterpillar. Then I guess I will too, the pollywog said happily. What fun, let's do it together. All right, the caterpillar agreed, although she would rather have done it alone. But I get to go first. The pollywog <coughs> didn't mind. He wasn't at all sure how it was done. I'll watch you, he said. 
So when the time came, the caterpillar started to spin the cocoon. This is the tricky part, she said. The pollywog watched as the caterpillar spun. Soon, only her head was uncovered. Now I have to close the lid, she said, and when I come out, I'll be a butterfly. Go ahead, the pollywog said excitedly. I want to see you do it. It'll take a while, the caterpillar warned. She started spinning again and was soon out of sight in the cocoon. For a long time, nothing happened. But the pollywog was patient. He watched and watched and watched for days and days and days. At last, there was activity in the cocoon. The end of it opened, and very slowly, the caterpillar climbed out. Only she wasn't a caterpillar anymore. She was a butterfly. She was a beautiful yellow butterfly. The pollywog was so excited, he hopped up and down with delight. He hopped up and down like a, a frog. Wah! I was so busy watching you, he said, I didn't know what was happening to me. You are a very handsome frog, the butterfly said as she flew off to try her new wings. But the frog was puzzled. I thought I was going to turn into a butterfly, he said. A caterpillar wiggled by. When I grow up, he said proudly to the frog, I'm going to turn into something else. But the frog wasn't listening. He was admiring his reflection in the water. I am, you know, a very handsome frog. And that's the end. <laughs> Do you guys like that one? Yeah. 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 Clearly, I like it. <laughs> what thumbs down? Is it because you're? Is it thumbs down because you're getting tired? Oh, all right. How about? Do we have one more story in us? Can we get to story number six? All right. It's actually a book I know that you love. It's called White Rabbit's Color Book. So we get to talk about all the colors again, including the ones that you like. You I like blue. blue. Okay. I like all the colors. I like red. I like red. I like red. I like red. What color do you think <coughs> Rabbit likes? Red. Hmm. One day, White Rabbit found three big tubs of paint. Red, yellow, and blue. Sunshine yellow, she thought. Lovely. A quick dip and... Yellow rabbit, bright as the sun. Now, what about red thought rabbit? Okay, what color is rabbit right now? Yellow. Yellow, and she hopped over to a tub of red, red. paint. When I turn the page, what color is rabbit going to be? Orange. I like your answer. What do you think? Orange. 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 Are you all in agree? And greens, orange? Yeah. What do you think? Red? Red. Okay. Did I hear purple? Hmm? Oh, all right. Let's find out. What's this? Orange rabbit. Look, red and yellow together make orange. Time for a wash, thought rabbit. Red on its own this time. Splash. Red rabbit. Sizzling hot red. How cool blue looks, thought Rabbit. So, here we are again. What color is Rabbit right this second? Purple. What color is Rabbit right this second? Purple. What color is Rabbit right this second? Purple. Red. And Rabbit's jumping into a tub of blue paint. What color? Purple. He's, well, she's keeping us waiting. What's this? Purple. 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 purple rabbit. Look, red and blue together make purple. You already knew that. I'm a very important royal purple rabbit. Princess purple rabbit in the shower. Blue will do, thought rabbit. Blue rabbit.
icy cold blue. Burr. How warm yellow looks, thought Rabbit. That looks so nice. So Blue Rabbit just jumped into a tub of yellow paint, and when I turn the page, Rabbit green, is going to be green, pink. Green. Rabbit is going to be red. Green. What color? Alakazam. Rabbit is. You were right. What color is Rabbit? Green. Look, blue and yellow together make green. Oh dear. No more water. All that's left is a little red paint. Now what would happen? Rabbit. Rabbit. <laughs> Hooray! Brown rabbit. You're right. Lovely warm brown. Blue, yellow, and red together make brown, and brown's just right for me. That you guys are so awesome. Give yourselves a round of applause. Give yourselves a sleepy round of applause. Wake up! Um, I think we can do one more story. Should we? Mm, let's see. I don't know. I don't know. My question is, do you want to read another story about sharing or a story about sticking together? All right. Well, let's do a color of his own, the sticking together one. <laughs> <laughs> Not the first time it's happened and isn't going to be the last. <laughs> Parrots are green. Goldfish are red. Can you see now? Honey. Goldfish are orange. Elephants are gray. Pigs are pink. All animals have a color of their own, except for chameleons. They change color wherever they go. On lemons, they are yellow. In the heather, they're purple. And on the tiger, they are striped like tigers. One day, a chameleon who was sitting on a tiger's tail said to himself, if I remain on a leaf, I shall be green forever, and so I too will have a color of my own. With this thought, he cheerfully climbed onto the greenest leaf. But in the autumn, the leaf turned yellow, and so did the chameleon. Later, the leaf turned red, and the chameleon turned red too. And then the winter winds blew the leaf from the branch, and with it, the chameleon. The chameleon was black in the long winter night. Why? He was a little, I think he was a little bummed out. But when spring came, he walked out into the grass and there he met another chameleon. He told a sad story. Won't we ever have a color of our own, he asked. I'm afraid not, said the other chameleon, who was older and wiser. But, he added, why don't we stay together? We'll still change color wherever we go, but you and I will always be alike. And so they remain side by side. They were green together and purple and yellow and red with white polka dots, and they lived happily ever after. The end. The end. The end. Hooray. Give yourselves a big round of applause. You're so awesome. You had, you must have had a thousand stories read to you today between the morning stories.